Chapter 23, The Lee Shore Some chapters back, one Bulkington was spoken of, a tall, new-landed mariner encountered in New Bedford at the inn. When on that shivering winter's night the Pequod thrust her vindictive bows into the cold, malicious waves, who should I see standing at her helm but Bulkington? I looked with sympathetic awe and fearfulness upon the man, who, in midwinter, just landed from a four years' dangerous voyage, could so unrestingly push off again for still another tempestuous term. The land seemed scorching to his feet. Wonderfulest things are ever the unmentionable. Deep memories yield no epitaphs. This six-inch chapter is the stoneless grave of Bulkington. Let me only say that it fared with him as with the storm-tossed ship that miserably drives along the leeward land. The port would fain give succor. The port is pitiful. In the port is safety, comfort, hearthstone, supper, warm blankets, friends, all that's kind to our mortalities. But in that gale, the port, the land, is that ship's direst jeopardy. She must fly all hospitality. One touch of land, though it but graze the keel, would make her shudder through and through. With all her might, she crowds all sail offshore. In so doing, fights against the very winds that fain would blow her homeward, Seeks all the lashed sea's landlessness again, for refuge's sake, forlornly rushing into peril, her only friend, her bitterest foe. Know ye now, Bulkington, glimpses do ye seem to see of that mortally intolerable truth, that all deep, earnest thinking is but the intrepid effort of the soul to keep the open independence of her sea, while the wildest winds of heaven and earth conspire to cast her on the treacherous, slavish shore? But as in landlessness alone resides the highest truth, shoreless, indefinite as God, so better it is to perish in that howling infinite than be ingloriously dashed upon the lee, even if that were safety. For worm-like then, oh, who would crave and crawl to land? Terrors of the terrible, is all this agony so vain? Take heart, take heart, O Bulkington, bear thee grimly, demigod, up from the spray of thy ocean perishing, straight up leaps thy apotheosis. End of chapter 23